Robert McDowell. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself in this situation. Well, to understand that, we have to go back a few hours to the beginning of the day. It is 6.30 on a Saturday morning. I'm currently headed to the train station to go Stirling for the one last adventure Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Tournament. Much, much more things I'm sure that you'd rather be doing at 6 30 on Saturday morning. I'd rather be unconscious, but I love this game. Made it to the train station, and as you can imagine, not a soul in sight. That's right, guys. Porkshaw's West is my local train station. If any haters want to pull up, if the ops want to pull up, Porkshaw's West is where you're going to find me. 35 years old, Rob. You're 35 years old. A short walk from Glasgow Central to Queen Street. And then we get to meet Fraser at the train station. We'll be travelling through to Stirling together, and he looks just as tired as I feel. Now the reason we travelled through so early was because Fraser was bringing through some terrain for the tournament. However, when we got there, uh, we found that all the tables had been set up and there was more than enough terrain to go around. So uh, we were there about an hour early, which gave us plenty of time to um, get a drink, chill, relax and um, set up our armies and have a look around. As you can see, uh, the tables at Common Ground Game are incredible. Now the format of the day was 4 games at 550 points, the scenarios were Domination, Destroy the Supplies, To the Death and Fog of War. Now if that sounds familiar, it's because the tournament that I played in last weekend, my last video, was the exact same rule set. So uh, you, you might say that I got some practice, um, I wouldn't because, um, well, I'm not going to spoil the video for you guys, but yeah, it's the exact same setup as last weekend's tournament as well. Now I was running a slightly modified version of my Isengard list from um, last tournament in the last video. Um, I dropped my Hoor for Ugluk, so I lost all those 8 inch movement marauders. I also swapped some of the uh, scouts for scouts with bows, so I actually had more shots. So my plan for the day was to sit back with the um, 5 crossbows and 4 bows that I had and shoot an army and make them come to me. However, that um, that plan went straight out the window game one when I was playing Alan Liddell. Now, not only is Alan one of the top players in Scotland, but he brought the defenders of Helm's Deep Legendary Legion, uh, which had a lot of 30-inch bows. Amongst his heroes, he also had Halif, who increased the fight value of his heroes uh, when he was in combat, as well as having a bow himself. And Aldor, that's the old man from the beginning of the Helm's Deep fight that shoots the Uruk. Um, his special rule is that he shoots before anyone else and he gets to re-roll. He also has one point of might which he can use to um, up the dice. And Alan also had gambling, so he was pretty much had infinite might on either um, Halif or Aldor. So you can imagine Aldor can pretty much uh, might up a dice roll every turn. Now it seems like Alan had the exact same plan as me, sit back and shoot, um, the difference here being that he had the models to back it up, um, so I had to keep moving my Urukai closer and closer, hoping that we'd eventually get into combat before I get broken, and uh, let me tell you, it was pretty close. By the time the battle lines clashed, I was a considerable number of models down, um, those Galadrum bows. Uh, really did a number on me, not to mention that I'm pretty sure Aldor got a range kill every turn maybe bar one. Um, those rerolls and the might point, the free might point pretty much, uh, were a killer. And I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the game, but the scenario was to the death, so the objective was to break each other. 
Now, Alan's army consisted of a number of Rohan Royal Guard, who are fight four, and in this legion, they're allowed to use their thrown spears as um, regular spear support, meaning that most of his army was at least fight four, not to mention that his elves with their bows also had spears as well, so they could spear support up to fight five. Bear in mind, my heroes are fight five, and all of my regular troops are fight four, meaning that I was, at best, um, going to draw on fight value. Now that we're into close combat, I feel like my chances could improve even slightly. All I had to do was wipe out half of his army in one turn. However, I had lost a lot of my numbers on the march in, so Alan had the outnumber, he had the higher fight value, and he was also able to trap a lot of my models, meaning he was chewing me up. On to game 2 and I was playing Destroy the Supplies against Andy Stone and his Iron Brew flavoured dwarves. Um, Kaz of Doom is such a cool army and I'm very tempted to maybe start one soon once I finish painting up uh, all of my Minas Tirith and other projects. But yeah, I really like the idea of having a dwarf army because every time I've went up against them um, it's been a struggle. Um, I wonder how it's going to go this game. Once again, my cunning plan of sitting back, shooting and waiting for my opponent to come to me just wasn't going to work. On Destroyer Supplies, I would have to get into Andy's half of the board and take his supplies. Um, also, shooting doesn't really work against dwarfs. Needing to roll sixes for almost all of his units to wound them was going to hurt me. I chose to march the main bulk of my force, led by Lurts and Ugluk, up the middle of the board straight towards the middle of objective. Um, luckily I outnumbered uh, Andy by quite a number of models, so all of his forces were sort of concentrated in the middle. I then have Rasku and his crossbows as far away from them as possible, hoping to get into the back and take the objective that way. After a couple of turns of movement and uneventful shooting, our battle lines clashed. Now, I want you to have a good look here at how many models I've got. They're not going to be there for long. I know it's bad form to complain about um, having unlucky dice, and I don't want to take anything away from Andy because he played a great game, but I couldn't roll to save myself. I don't think I rolled a six the entire game. I rolled so many ones and twos that it was actually a joke. We were both laughing at it. I rolled three ones in a row at one point, but regardless, yeah. Very unlucky with the combat, so you can see how many guys are starting to lose very quickly. Heading into the next round, I was able to start moving some of my units towards one of the objectives. Uh, the one in the back, uh, right corner, partially obscured by the house, that's where my units are, hidden behind there. Andy, however, was able to get a couple of his units over there in time to slow me down. Into the shooting phase, in my desperation to whittle down some of his numbers, I shot into combat and promptly killed my own unit. At the start of the combat phase, I had Lurts and Ugluk in combat against one of his heroes, a Dwarf King. I had Ugluk call a strength so that I'd be winning on fight value and I rolled up to a 9. Then, with 3 attacks from Lurts, 2 from Ugluk and 2 from Spear Support needing 6s all round, I rolled 1-6. I had to mate up one of the fangs from Ugluk in order to deal a second wound and force Andy to roll a fate dice for his unit, which he passed and the unit survived. Over the rest of the fight phase, I lost a lot of units. I didn't take many with me as well, so I was really struggling to hold this middle ground of the battlefield um, that I was hoping to sort of pin everyone in whilst my other units went around and burnt the supplies. With me losing models at a record rate, I decided to move some of my archers over to hold my objectives, hoping that they could just um, protect them long enough for the game to end when I get 25%ed. 
I then did the same at the top of the board, leaving one crossbow behind to help guard it, whilst Vrasku and the rest of them moved up to burn the supply at the top of the board and then hopefully sweep around to the middle. At the start of the combat phase, Andy killed my banner, which would potentially cost me some points. Lurch would then lose a fight against the Dwarven King, but luckily avoid the wound. Next up it was Durin versus Ugluk. Now Ugluk had called a heroic strike, which Durin had countered, so we both rolled to up our fight value. I went up to 9, Durin went up to 7, so I would be winning any ties. However, Durin rolled a 6 and I couldn't roll anything better than a 2 or a 3. I didn't have the might to um, up it anyway. So Durin then killed Ugluk in a single turn of combat because he is an absolute monster. Over the next couple of turns, Lutzer was able to hold the line in the middle of the board, surviving a couple of rounds of combat with Durin, whilst my crossbows on the far side of the board managed to get up and burn the first set of supplies before moving towards the middle ones. However, Lutzer's luck would eventually run out and he would be killed by Durin and a couple of Iron Guard. Going into the last round I was starting to take courage tests as I was broken and the one model I had on the table that could reach a supply and burn it ran away. After another couple of my models ran away we realised it would be mathematically impossible for me to break Andy on the final turn of the game so I would lose. I would score 2 points for burning a single supply but Andy would score 2 for having a banner alive two for killing my leader and two for breaking me, giving them a well deserved 6-2 victory. Game 3 was domination against Ben who had brought more dwarves so my game plan went out the window again. It was the Iron Hills list that he had Dane as well as Murin and Drar. With domination there are five objective markers on the board, one is the exact centre and the, you pick two each and put them down at least 12 inches away from any other ones. Um, you can see a couple of them on the board at the moment and the objective is to hold them at the end of the game. You can also deploy your army up to the halfway point of the map so it means that these games can get into combat very quickly which is always good especially when you've got a combat heavy army like dwarves or to a lesser extent my Urukai. In a very similar game plan to the last game, um, similar armies and similar uh, scenario, I charged the majority of my forces into his army and left some crossbows up the back to sneak up and take some objectives. Now what I haven't mentioned yet is that there was a spot prize available every round for achieving an uh, optional objective that the TO decided at the beginning of each round and announced to everyone. For this, it was the first person to hold all five objectives. Now, I was holding all five, so I ran away to go and claim my spot prize, which was a replica one ring. I don't know why I said replica, it's not like it's a real one. But enough about shiny little trinkets, we're here for the fights. Uh, they were not going my way, which is to be expected when you're playing against Dane. He is an absolute nightmare, especially when he's on top of the bacon battle bus. However, I wasn't really minding that he was chewing through my troops. The game ends when one team, team, one army, is uh, quartered. And I was holding all five objectives, so if he quartered me, I was probably going to win at this point. Um, so I was happy to throw trips at him and hope they died. Into the more important combats and more exciting ones anyway. Ugluk was fighting Murin and Drar, and he was trapped, so if I lost, I could have been in serious trouble. However, I managed to win the duel and even inflicted two wounds upon Drar. However, with a point of fate and a point of might, he was able to save one of them, keeping him on his feet. Going into the big fight of the round, it was Dane versus Lurch. Now Dane had charged Lurch, so he got plus one attacks and would knock me prone and inflict double wounds if he won the fight. So I had to increase my chances against the Bacon Battle Bus as much as possible. I had two spear supports, but I opted to call a heroic strike as well. However, um, Dane has Master of Battle and he copied my heroic strike. We rolled for our strengths and both got up to fight 10. On the roll of the dice, we both rolled 5s and elected to use a point of might each to take it to a 6. And then on the 1, 2, 3 evil, 4, 5, 6, good, I managed to win that roll off. 
I was able to inflict two wounds upon Dane, which he was able to wipe out with the help of three points of fate and a point of might. All in all, not a bad round of combat for me. Going into the next round of combat, Ugluk was surrounded by Murin, Drar and another dwarf and was unable to repeat the heroics of the previous battle and unfortunately died. On to round 2 between Dane and Lurts, I called the heroic strike, Dane Master battled it, I rolled up to fight value 6, he rolled up to fight value 9, uh, meaning that any draws he would win. He rolled his dice and rolled a 6 before inflicting 3 wounds upon Lurts and I managed to save one of them and him with his only point of faith. Round 3 of Dane vs Lurch, neither of them had any might points left. I won the fight but was unable to inflict any wounds upon Dane. Into the last round and unfortunately there would be no epic showdown between Lurch and Dane. I charged Lurch into a couple of models to stop them from progressing towards one of the objectives and I did the same with a couple of regular troops on Dane. Now at this point we looked around the board and realised that the game was pretty much over. There were no more points available on the board. We got points for wounding leaders but there was no points for killing them. So uh, Dane or Lurks killing each other would not have gained any more points. And all of the objective markers were out of reach for his models. However, someone who was observing the match then pointed out to my opponent that if he moved one of his models to within 3 inches of one of the objective markers then I wouldn't score full points and he was able to deny me the win and instead we drew 4 each. Finally we were on to game 4 and I was up against Lewis and his uh, Haradrim slash Mordor army led by Sodan with the Betrayer and we were playing Fog of War, my absolute favourite game. No sarcasm at all, I do love this game, I love it so much, I once played it twice at a tournament, link to that video up above. Now Lewis had quite a variation of troops, he had some black Numenorians on horse which I was not looking forward to tangling with, he had some orcs which I was pretty even about and he had some Haradrim warriors which I was looking forward to getting into combat with because they were defence 4 so I'll be wounding them on force. However, a lot of those Haradrim had poison bows and the Betrayer special rule means that for one point of will per turn you can reroll all wound rolls with poison weapons so all of those bows would be shooting me and re-rolling to wound. So I had to charge. I couldn't sit back and wait and let him come to me, meaning my grand plan came off zero times this tournament. And I know what you're thinking, don't worry, as soon as I realised that Lewis wasn't going to be marching his units down the table towards me, I moved the camera. Now, as is the rules for Fog of War, I had to capture a terrain piece, which was handily this big rock on the right hand side. I had to kill a hero that was not the leader, so I only had one choice, that was the Betrayer, which is the uh, ring wraith on the horse, in case you didn't know. And I had to protect one of my heroes, which I chose, Vrasku, knowing he could sit back with some cover and shoot away. Now my plan for getting to his squishy archers as well as the betrayer hid behind them was to sacrifice some of my scouts. What I did was I uh, walled off the black Numenorians and orcs by placing the scouts just about an inch away from each other meaning that he had to charge um, and couldn't get around them so he had to go through them and whilst I was doing that I just tunnelled the rest of my troops straight up towards the archers. However, I would be a very key component down in the coming battles as Ugluk had already fallen to some arrows. Lurts, however, was a troop killing machine and he was churning through those Haradrim, backed up by Vrasku who ditched the crossbow and got stuck right into combat as well this game. Now however, through a mixture of bad luck and just bad choice by me, Lurtz was charged by both the Betrayer and Saladin. He was in as much trouble as you can imagine and he lost that fight and died. This was a huge blow for me because Lurtz was probably my best chance at killing the Betrayer who was my target. Now with Lurtz's death I was actually broken and the rules of Fog of War are once an army is broken on the following turns you roll a dice on a 1 or a 2 the game ends and wouldn't you know it at the first name of asking the game finished. 
Lewis would win 9-4. He got 3 points for killing his target, who was Oogluk. He got 3 points for breaking me, and he got 3 points for protecting his target, who was a betrayer. My 4 points came for 3 for protecting Vrasco, but only 1 for the terrain piece, because in his final turn, Lewis managed to get a model onto it. However, when you look at how close Lewis was to claiming his chosen terrain piece, which would have given him a 12-4 victory, I really can't complain. And that brings us nicely back to me winning my wooden spoon trophy as well as my signed picture of JMAC. Go follow him if you don't already. Um, apologies, I am dying. Um, it is the middle of a heatwave and I've been sitting in front of my computer working and then editing all day in order to get this video out so that I can just chill for the weekend and play Starfield. Um, I wanted to, to do this rather than a, a, vid, a, a voiceover because I wanted to explain what happened at the tournament because my wooden spoon came a little bit of an asterisk and I just wanted to talk about it. At the end of the last game, I had three losses and a draw. Um, so I'm not surprised that I was down at the bottom. Because let's be honest, I'm pretty shit at this game. Uh, I've only been playing since June. Um, and I have been to three proper tournaments and two more friendly ones. Um, they're all on YouTube, so you can see every competitive game of this that I've ever played. I'm very new to it, and like I said, I'm shit. So I'm not surprised to finish near the bottom. However, when I finished, um, I knew that there was at least two people who had not won a game. They'd lost all of their games that they played. So I thought, well, I'll finish above them with a draw. This draw could save my ass. So I was quite surprised when I got called up to pick up my trophy. Um, once I sat back down and, and uh, everything else had finished, the two guys that I knew had lost all their games came up and explained to me that they had got buys in previous rounds. What had happened is an odd number of players turned up on the day. There'd been some last minute call offs. So someone got a buy every round. And the way the tournament works was the person at the bottom of the rankings got that buy. So those guys got 1-0 victories and that took them above me. I actually took three people above me. So three people got buys who could have potentially, because I'm not saying they would have lost their last game. That's why it's a lot of ifs and buts and maybes. But they could have lost their my game and could have finished below me. So potentially three people other than me should have won this. Like I said, I'm not that upset. Um, I would be more upset if I was one of those guys that missed out in a game because there was an odd number of players. But that said, I can't blame people for no-showing. Um, people have lives, this is just a hobby. A lot more important things take precedence. So it's just one of the things like, what are you going to do about it? I just wanted to talk about it because I felt like the rule was really weird. Um, but what are you going to do? Like, You can't punish guys for turning up and playing by giving them a loss. Can you give them a draw? Even then, like, a, a draw could depend to potentially put them above me. Or do you say that someone that had a buy can't win a prize because the fourth player to get a buy finished third and actually got a podium place uh, when they hadn't played all of their games? So I think I'd actually be more upset if I was the guy that finished fourth and missed out on a podium because someone got a buy. Uh, but yeah, this is th th this is just my thoughts because I'm very new to this hobby. It's all weird for me. Um, but yeah, imagine sort of winning a prize by default because someone didn't show up and you got lucky, and through the luck of the draw, you got a win. Um, yeah, strange. That's why I don't make the rules. I just turn up and play the game. But yeah, I, in the grand scheme of things, for me, it's not a big deal. I would definitely be more upset if it had been one of the guys that had got up at half past six, paid full price for a ticket, travelled through to Stirling, and only got three games. So I was sitting to my thumbs whilst everyone else was playing their fourth. It's like a it's a loss loss situation. There's no good outcome unless you pull a player off the streets and ask them to play in your tournament. But enough complaining. On to the winners. Best Painted went to our good friend Fraser for his Knights of Dale. Uh, I voted for you Fraser by the way, so uh, you're welcome. 
most sporting went to Andy Stone, who we played in game two, and I actually voted for, so I'm two for two in the votes at the moment. Third place went to Edward Watt, and second place went to Ben Haslam. And the first place prize went to Alan Liddell, seen here swinging his sword around. Um, I don't feel so bad losing to Alan in game one, knowing that he went on to win the whole thing. And with that, a great day of gaming was brought to a close. I went up the road and honestly I went straight to bed. Uh, I couldn't be happier to see Jade and the dog. I was knackered. That's it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.